Welcome to How to Sell More. Today, we are talking about the difference between a startup, a scale-up, and empire business leaders. I'm Mark Drager. Let's get into it. So maybe you are like me. And over the years, and (laughs) I hate to say this, decades, that we've been in business, we've noticed that some people are just cut out for the role that they're in. Like they are made for that role. And others can't seem to make anything happen. Despite the fact that they have all of the tools and all of the resources, and they, they seem like they should be great for the role, but for whatever reason, just nothing happens. There's no growth. There's no progress. They can't get things done. Have you ever noticed that? Because <laughs> I have. And this is something that especially afflicts those of us who are entrepreneurs. If you are an entrepreneur, if you're uh, a CEO founder, heck, even if you're a lead, uh, a VP, SVP, EVP, AVP, if you're a lead of a department, this can even happen to us. But I want to share with you a framework that actually kind of blew my mind when I came across it a few years ago. And it was something I was introduced by my good buddy, Nick Bradley. Now, we had Nick on the podcast uh, early on when we launched. If you haven't heard the episode where he and I talk about the scaling up, he's really a scale up and exit expert. He comes from a huge M&A background and he's done a lot of work in that space. But he has this great podcast called Scale Up that uh, I was introduced to a few years ago and we've actually helped him rebrand and reposition and a few things like that. But uh, one of his early episodes, he shared this framework about the difference between a startup, a scale-up, and the entrepreneurs who run them. And this provided so much clarity to me, both in terms of the type of leader that I have found myself to be, but also with the owner-operated medium size organizations or the owner-operated organizations that I've worked with in the past as clients. And so I want to share this with you because I think that once you're aware of this, well, this will completely transform the way that you look at yourself as an entrepreneur or business leader, but also help you prepare for your next level. There's a great book out there, What Got You Here Won't Get You There by Marshall Goldsmith, something I read a number of years ago. And it's it's a fantastic book. If you're not aware of it, it basically just says, hey, whatever skill sets, whatever personality traits, whatever it is that you've done to get to where you are today, that has served you. And it has served you well. It got you to this level. But those skill sets, those personality traits, the things that have gotten you to where you are today, they will not be the resources or tools that get you to the next level. They will not help you break through to the next level. What served you in the past will not serve you in the future. And if you hold on to it too much, if you think you're like, well, my gut or my, this is who I am, or I don't want to change, or this got me as far as I am. Why would I change horses mid stream? Is that a thing? Mid race, mid stream? Why would I change horses now? Well, what got you here won't get you there. And so let me share with you these three steps of the framework that so blew my mind. (laughs) Okay, so startup, scale up, empire. Seems pretty self-explanatory, doesn't it? Well, you know what? There are startup leaders, startup entrepreneurs. And this is entrepreneur, this is an intrapreneur, this works in the corporate space, this works anywhere. You may be the type of person like me who loves creating V1 of something. Or even before that, just dreaming of what it could be. But if all we spent our time doing was dreaming, we would never get anywhere. So maybe you're like me and you love creating version one of something. You love the excitement of reverse engineering things and figuring them out and creating something and testing it in the market, making continuous improvements and trying and trying and trying and swarming and scrambling and making it happen for people. This often allows you to move extremely quick and be really agile and be really lean and have amazing margins. This is startup. This is startup of a product launch. This is startup of a company. This is startup of a new division. This is a startup of anything that you do. We have an idea. How do we make it a reality? How do we test it in market? How do we move really quick and break things? How do we make things better? How do we learn? How do we grow? And startup is something that, frankly, most leaders are not capable of operating in. But if you are an entrepreneur like me or a business leader who has 
been able to take something, go from year one to year five and establish it to a place where you can start to get, let's say, predictable lead sources, predictable closes, predictable delivery. You can start to really create version one, two, three of something where you can start to, as they say, nail it and scale it. The first step of that is nail it. If that's you, then you may find yourself being a startup entrepreneur. And the reason I say many people can't actually operate in this space is I've noticed that when you give people the possibility of anything, when you say, we can do anything, they are often frozen by the fear of making a mistake or not knowing what the right move to make is or what the most strategic move to make is or the most efficient move to make is. And when you're a startup person, you don't care about that. Like, you know that running any direction is the right direction. Because if you start running in any direction, you will quickly learn what's wrong. And then you can fix it. It's the greatest thing in the world, I think. But then I have found myself being, for most of my life, a startup kind of entrepreneur. Now, what's the next step? Well, the next step to that is the idea of being a scale-up entrepreneur. And don't get me wrong, there is no right or wrong with this. Wherever you find yourself on the spectrum, there's no right or wrong. What is right is knowing what you are and leaning into it and then becoming the person you need to become. And what's wrong is ignoring this and thinking you can do anything because I've seen a lot of people waste a lot of time and money being in the wrong role. So the second is a scale-up entrepreneur. Now, this is an entrepreneur who's capable of taking that initial nail it and then they scale it right? They know the marketing or the lead sources and have predictable lead sources. Now, how do we move this to the next level? They know that they have some initial systems or SOPs or tools. Now, how do we get more people to do this? They know that they can move out and, and maybe bring in some outside funding, or they can position the organization for a sale in the future, or they can build it to a, a space where they can actually work themselves out of the business. They can move from being hands-on to being CEO, from CEO to being on the board, from being on the board to being the chair. This is a scale-up entrepreneur. This is something I've really struggled with because when I started my agency in 2006, it took me seven years to hit a million in revenue. I was, <laughs> I was 23 when I started. I did not know anything. So it may have taken you less time, but it took me seven years to hit a million in revenue. And then we were kind of stuck there for a few years. I think we spent four or five years just at a million dollars in revenue. And we were able to grow. I made some changes in 2016. We were able to grow uh, well past that. But by the time COVID hit, you know, a little over 2 million in revenue, 24 people on my team, it was a mess. It was a mess. I didn't have the operations. I didn't have the systems. I didn't have the bureaucracy. Everything, all of that stuff felt like it would slow us down too much. And I was not interested in moving slow. I was interested in moving quick. But, you know, being a startup guy and moving quick helps you when it's small and you need to move quick. But when people are counting on you, when people are counting on one another, when certain steps have to happen in certain orders by certain timelines to be able to make the entire machine work, you better move yourself into a scale-up mindset. And that includes more operations, more SOPs, more team members, a tighter finance, tighter controls over expenses, and understanding your different classes on your books so you understand uh, your, your profit centers and how to eke more out of it. I was at an event the other day where I heard someone who had taken their business uh, over, I mean, they started in 2008. It's what, you know, so over 15 years. They've been able to take a home services company in the garage door industry. They install garage doors. And they were able to build this into, a, I think, a $250 million business. That's providing, I think, $53 million in uh, EBITDA. And they had mentioned during their presentation that when they got outside funding and the, the outside funding came in, the, the funding was important. He was still able to control the business and operate the way he wanted. But what they brought in was a level of sophistication on the accounting side that he had never had before. They looked at every truck that they had on the road and questioned the right routes and whether they could save money on fuel. They looked at each call and determined that each call would take 23 minutes of time and is there a better way they could go about it. They looked at all of these different aspects of the business and when they looked at everything without uh, sacrificing uh, employee culture or employee experience, without sacrificing customer experience and without lowering the quality of anything they did, they were able to find 7% savings of net profit on the bottom line. 
And when you're running an organization with over $50 million profit, 7% is significant. Now, this would not be possible if you were like me, scrambling to run your organization all the time because you just love putting out fires. I mean, we don't. There's this really great quote, and I think it might be attributed to Dan Sullivan over at Strategic Coach that says, you know, are you really good at putting out fires or are you just an arsonist? <laughs> because some of us who have ADHD and are entrepreneurial and startup people, we love the excitement of having to put out fires. And sometimes we're the ones running around starting them. But this gentleman who's built this amazing organization over the last 15 years and scaled it up and gotten into mergers and acquisitions and started acquiring new companies and got outside funding and they've been able to find 7% on this $50 million, that is very much a scale-up mindset. You need more leadership. You need maybe EOS or some kind of operating system. You need the right people. You need the right systems. You need the right processes. You need to measure all the data. If you don't have these things, you can't scale up a company. And the challenge is people throw scale around a lot. They mix up scaling with growth. First, you need to create version one of something and you need to get it to a place where it's predictable. Predict predictable outcomes is what we're looking for. And then you're looking for growth. You're looking to grow that. But that is very different than scaling. Scaling is when you put systems and processes in place so that way the machine as a whole can run without really any kind of dramatic oversight. That's when you're going to add funding, you're going to add money, you're going to put fuel, you're going to open up the tap, you're going to throw gasoline on the fire, you're going to really blow things up. That's the scaling stage. Now, you may find yourself being a scale-up entrepreneur, and that would be amazing. You might not find yourself being very successful in the startup phase, but maybe you're going to acquire another company. Maybe you're going to step into another company. Maybe you're going to partner with an existing company or someone like me who is a very comfortable startup entrepreneur, and you're going to come in and bring in your systems and your tools, maybe as the president of the organization, to come in and help us scale. A great way to think about this, Nick Bradley, my friend who I picked this up from, says, you know, think about when you were young and if you played Lego, if you uh, were a boy like me or whatever it is you might have done. But when I played Lego... He said that he liked to follow the instructions. He liked to follow the instructions to the T and build Lego the way the instructions said. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I followed the instructions and I did it, but I had way more fun when I was just making my own shit up. I like to just get a pile of Lego and just make my own shit up. And that was how I approached it. And that's how I approach business. The third type of entrepreneur is an empire entrepreneur. And this is when you're, you know, 100 million plus in revenue. This is when you've moved to the chair seat. This is when you are operating a, maybe a family office or family practice. And frankly, you're moving much more into an investor role. Your businesses are assets. You need to leverage them as assets. And you move much more into a finance, an investor, or really this empire role. And it is a totally different way to think and operate. I have a friend who I've come to realize is not a startup entrepreneur and is not the empire entrepreneur that they hope to be. And the reason I've come to figure this out, I think I believe that they're a scale-up guy. I believe that they're a scale-up entrepreneur. And the reason why is because they were able to take someone else's business and scale it extremely quick. This is in the manufacturing space. They were able to come in and take someone else's metal manufacturing business and scale it extremely quick. But when it became time to move from the first business, and they have a group of companies now, from the first business to the second, they just bolted on a new service. They bolted on uh, from metal manufacturing to wood mill, millwork, and from millwork to plastic, and from plastic to this and to that. And they just kept bolting on parts of their business. But along, and each one, each time that they bolted on part of their business in this scale up type of mindset, it worked very, very well. But along the way, they were also given opportunities. You know, over the last 15 years, they've built up a very large and very successful business. So they have budget, they have money, and people approach them with opportunities. And it seems to me from being on an outsider and looking in that each of these ex outside opportunities, none of them have really ever gone anywhere. So they'll buy an organization, they'll buy into it, they'll have a few good years, they'll put out 18, 20 million dollars in revenue, but five, six, seven years later, the organization's now down to two or three million revenue a year. That's strange, right? 
Or they might partner with another organization to launch a brand new product. They both pour money into R&D. They develop the product. They develop the brand. They take it to market. Never goes anywhere. And I was thinking about this. Why might this be the case? Well, if this framework, the startup, scale-up, empire, entrepreneur, if this framework's correct, then, you know, clearly my friend is not really a startup person. So I don't think that they're resourcing these new companies with the leaders, the startup leaders that they need to be able to hustle, to make it work, to figure it out, to find market fit, to, to continually develop the product or what have you. And as a scale-up type of entrepreneur, I don't think they're focusing enough of their own time and energy on these extra businesses within their ecosystem because they're busy focusing on their own main core business from a scaling point of view. And I don't believe that they're approaching it in the empire mindset where they've acquired these companies or launched these new companies in the way that an empire entrepreneur would treat this as an asset or an investment and frankly put the leader in place of each organization to run them as an independent business. So everything's kind of just sitting in the middle. This group of companies where the main company is wildly successful and they've been able to bolt on all kinds of new companies or new services for that main company because they're scaling it up. But they haven't moved to an empire position, so their other companies are failing. And they're not a startup entrepreneur, so their other companies are failing. And so they're just kind of left with these companies that are kind of not really doing anything. Now, if you're like me, and you quickly identify what type of business leader, entrepreneur, CEO that you are, well, Yahtzee, right? Like, joy to us, because we know where we are. But we should also remember, as my good friend, Dr. Benjamin Hardy, the author of many, many books, including one of my favorites, Your Personality Isn't Permanent. Great book. But as Ben Hardy says in Personality Isn't Permanent, your personality isn't permanent. <laughs> if you are a startup entrepreneur, you can become a scale-up entrepreneur. You can work your way to an empire entrepreneur. You can work your way to any way you want to be. If you're a scale-up person, you can take on startup traits. Now, it's not easy personality shifting and, and identity shifting is very, very challenging, but it doesn't mean that you're stuck there. So I think the real win for us is just to first identify which type of business leader or entrepreneur you are, figure out the playgrounds where you can make the most moves and do the best space, go into those spaces and make shit happen. But then if you find yourself looking off at these other roles, these other places, these other things, what got you here won't get you there. Your personality is not permanent. So you have a decision to make. Should you run much faster and much further in your comfort zone, the things that you do really well? Nothing wrong with that. Or should you take some time to try and grow into this new experience, this new level and operate at a different level? Not gonna be easy, but there's nothing wrong with that either. I think what's wrong is if you don't take the time to figure this out, you do nothing and you scratch your head and wonder why nothing's working. And with that, we will wrap up this episode of How to Sell More. If you want to get in touch with me, head over to LinkedIn. You can find my profile. My name is Mark Drager. Drop me a DM. Let me know what you think of this talk. I would love to connect with you. And as always, I'm Mark Drager, and I will catch you in the next episode.